everyone. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and I'm here today with a quick video to talk about acid dye powder weight versus volume. When I am measuring out acid dyes for a project, I will use a small kitchen scale and do everything based on the grams of dye. So if I'm making a stock solution, I will measure out say five grams of dye, dissolve it in 500 milliliters of water for a 1% stock solution. But this does add an additional step and has an additional sort of requirement. And so there are some people who might prefer, say for one skein of yarn, to measure out a quarter teaspoon or an eighth teaspoon of dye and go about it that way. The big reason to weigh your dye by grams versus by volumes is that the manufacturers mix these dye stocks thinking about the weight and the colors that you can achieve per weight of dye. They recommend specific on weight of goods. Uh, for example, Dharma Trading Company recommends an on weight of goods of 1.5% to 2% for most of their colors, and then for some of their more saturated colors, they recommend that you use an on weight of goods of 4%, which would be 4 grams of dye per 100 grams to achieve the uh, advertised color. Since I needed to make up some stocks today anyway, I thought that while I'm weighing out my five grams of dye for each of these colors, that it could be worth uh, me using measuring spoons and measuring the volume as I go along. And yeah, who knows what we'll see. As always, I will be wearing gloves, safety glasses, and wearing a respirator while dealing with the powders so that way uh, I don't inhale or accidentally get anything in my eye or anything like that. We are going to start today with the color Cherry Bomb. And let's try measuring out uh, one teaspoon of dye. Uh, this is approximately leveled right here. Let's see how much that weighs. Okay, so that looks about 2.8 grams right now. All right, let's do now a half teaspoon. And again, this is approximate. Okay, so 4.2, 4.3. It's good that there is some consistency on the same day for the same amount of dye. But, it can really depend, and the volume that you get can depend on how compact your powders are, or um, even probably from color to color. I'm not sure that we will see the same kind of weights with different colors necessarily. All right, next color is dark navy. Uh, and we're gonna get one teaspoon, 2.3 grams, so I'm gonna go ahead and do a second teaspoon. Oh, that one was, and that one was more. So the first one I got 2.3 grams. The second one gave us about three grams of dye. This one was notable because we did two different teaspoons in a row, and each one gave us a pretty different weight. I mean, the difference between 2.3 grams, 2.4 grams, and three grams is significant. Uh, that extra half gram of dye can make a difference in your depth of shade depending on the color. Now I think that we got such a different weight because one of our spoonfuls, our second one, the dye was more compact than the first one. And so this was actually a really good example of what I wanted to show. Finally, the last color I am weighing out today is Peacock Blue. And let's weigh out approximately a quarter teaspoon about 0.9 grams. Second one, that is pretty consistent. So far we're having consistency within this color, but 0.9 grams for a quarter teaspoon. Okay, <laughs> we've now added four quarter teaspoons and we have 3.6 grams. Again, this is different 
a different weight per volume than what we've seen for the other colors. This one is clearly more compact. Could I have been overfilling my quarter teaspoon with this color? Definitely. I definitely could have been doing that. Um, but overall, again, when measuring out what should be approximately one teaspoon, we've gotten everywhere from, you know, 2.3 to 3.6 grams, which is a huge difference. So why is this important? And it really is only important if you're concerned about consistency, because the density of your dye, how compact or how fluffy it is, can vary from when you first open it to when you use it a couple months later, or even between one batch versus another from the same supplier. So if you're gonna get like a huge ver variability when you're dealing with a specific volume of your dye powder, then you could get inconsistent color results, which is only a problem if you have a recipe and you are trying to replicate it. So if you wanna make a recipe for achieving a specific shade or a specific colorway, it makes a bit more sense to go for grams. If you dye more by feel and it's okay if there's some variability in what you end up with in the end, by all means, you can go by volume. There's nothing wrong with it. Uh, one of my favorite techniques is just to go straight from the dye powder where I'm not doing any measuring at all. I'm just dyeing by feel. So that is absolutely okay. But ultimately, as long as you're consistent with the way that you measure the color, you will likely end up with some reproducible results. But there could be a fluke and you get one overpacked spoon and then suddenly your color is a lot more intense. Um, which, you know, you can always add more color, but you can't exactly take it away. So that could be a problem. I am happy that I can finally answer a question and say, all right, there's between, I guess, like 2.3 and 3.6 grams of dye per one teaspoon. Um, and it really probably varies not just on the compactness of the dye, but it could also vary a lot on the color. Different colors could have different volumes per weight just because they're made up of different molecules. They have different amounts of filler and things like that. When you're speckling with Derma Silvered Gray and True Black, the colors look of the specks of the actual dye in there looks pretty indistinguishable. But there's no question that there's gotta be some kind of filler in that silver gray dye stock so that way you can measure out a full gram versus having to do a fraction of the gram to get that more true gray versus sort of a deep gray. This is something I talked about in The Math of Yarn Dyeing where we actually went and looked at the different depths of shade of silver gray and true black and how they compare versus the amount of dye used for each of those skeins. Uh, I'll have a link to that video in the video description and iCard. Anyway, I hope that this was really helpful and helped answer some questions. I have no problem dying by feel. Uh, you don't need to do strict calculations to get beautiful results. It's totally okay to go with the flow and just have fun. But it's just when you want something more reproducible, uh, kitchen scales aren't that expensive and it's worth getting one. One other thing, uh, the accuracy of your kitchen scale is something also to consider with this. There's no question there can be some variability there. And I know this particular scale has trouble when you're adding um, little amounts that are less than say 0.2 grams, sometimes in like itty bitty increments. Sometimes those don't necessarily register right away. It's important to keep that in mind and so if you're dealing with really low weights that you want to measure take that into account when you go and purchase a scale i am rebecca from chemnitz and if you found this video helpful make sure you subscribe to the chemnitz tutorials youtube channel and give the video a like i release two new yarn dyeing videos every week on tuesday and friday mornings at 8 30 a.m eastern time and you really don't want to miss any of the fun so make sure that you also turn on notifications if you have a lot more dyeing questions you should go and check out the chemnitz lab facebook group 
we have a huge community of dyers and other fiber artists, starting from people who are starting out and dyeing their first skeins to people who have shops and businesses. And so it's a great place for collaboration, answering questions, and talking about how to do different techniques. Uh, you can find a link to it in the video description. Thank you so much for watching, everyone.